Toba Shuemimo is a fixed income dealer at FSDH Merchant Bank and is joining us uh, via Skype at FMDQ uh, Securities Exchange, uh, FMDQ Exchange Place. Uh, good morning, Toba. Uh, let's uh, get you to unpack the fixed income space for us, in particular the market auction and again today's matured treasuries that will be repaid by the financial regulator. Hi, good morning, Bosin. Okay, just like you said, um, we had the FGN bond auction yesterday conducted by the DMO. Um, 150 billion was on offer. And just as we've seen the recent trend continue, there's been an increase in demands on government securities. Um, it, the subscription was pretty high. It was over 250 billion. And a total of 157 billion was sold. Yeah, yes. So, uh, okay, yes, we saw. Yeah, please, yeah, please we go saw, ahead. Um, this led, yes, the um, increase in the demand led to pressure in the marginal rates. We saw across all tenants the five year, the 10 year, and the 30 year bond, there was a significant drop in the yields. On the five year bond, it was over 200 basis points. It closed at 12% from previous levels of 14.05. At the 10 year bond, it closed at 12.93 from 14.233 previously. While on the 30-year bond, we saw it close at 13.39%, as again, 14.6% during the last auction. Okay. Uh, so if, if you look at the... Uh, so what's your take on the opening call on the yield curve for treasury bills for today and the expected liquidity level as we, as we get to the end of the week tomorrow? So for, just like I said earlier, the increase in demand, it's been spread across both in the bonds market and the treasury bills market. So even on the treasury bills, we have seen a drop in yields across most of the maturities. We expect that trend to continue today. We have um, a total of 352 billion maturing at the OMO auction. There hasn't been any news of an OMO auction to be conducted by the CBN. So that liquidity is expected to remain in the system. We also expect um, some more liquidity via FAC inflow into the system today. So the liquidity in the system should be, it has improved a lot more from an average of just about 40, 50 billion throughout the week. We expect it to be around four, 500 as at right now. So uh, at FSDH Merchant Bank, how are you folks playing the new central bank policy directive. What are you learning from investors, retail investors, body corporates, local corporates who have been locked out of the open market operations, nine to the NTB marketplace? So yes, the, um, the NTB market is still open to all retail investors. It's just um, the demand has, improved, has increased significantly. So we still have a lot of retail investors um, trying to get into that field. But other than that, the bond market is always an option for any investor. You have the FGN savings bonds as well. The retail investors can actually patronize that. Mm. Very interesting. Okay, uh, it's good to have you around. I'm sure you folks have a lot to uh, uh, talk about and plan ahead as we look at uh, Monetary Policy Committee meeting Monday and Tuesday. Thank you so much, uh, Toba, uh, from... Uh, um, FSDH, Merchant Bank, a fixed income dealer. Toba Shubamimo, thank you so much for coming through on the program via FMDQ Exchange Place. Temple Ashaju is uh, giving us a few minutes to wrap up the program on the stock market. Our side is back at the trading floor of the Nigerian uh, Stock Exchange. Temple, we're back uh, 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 to you. The big story yesterday was around Access Bank, uh, the transition from the current chairman to the new uh, chairman in the first week, uh, January 8, 2020, to be uh, uh, precise, uh, Seplat uh, also. But again, you talked yesterday about the oil and gas uh, uh, companies and uh, corn oil remain very the optic. You think investors are still sniffing around and trading the news cycle, trying to get market hearsay, market rumors, all of that uh, piling into what's investor sentiment uh, at the moment. 
Yes, Bozen. I mean, I, we know that analysts in recent times, uh, since this announcement from CBN on uh, Omo players or no players have been have hit the markets uh, news wires. We know that analysts generally have been doing valuations, uh, you know, on daily basis. I mean, consistently uh, trying to check where it's best actually to put money. And I think that's uh, Cornwell, uh, you know, based on what has been happening in that uh, company, uh, is one of the, one major company or stock that uh, investors can actually put their funds on. That's why we've been seeing this, uh, you know, uh, growth and uh, appreciation, capital appreciation on the share price of that company in recent times. Uh, so maybe going forward, one other company that investors might want to watch in that space uh, will be uh, Seplatz. Because again, Seplatz uh, num uh, 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 just posted a notice now to the stock exchange and it shows that the uh, scheme of arrangement is going to be coming through, you know, effectively going forward because again, they've had their uh, court meeting uh, over the the acquisition of Eland uh, oil and gas, uh, which is something that I think has also fueled the uh, reprojection of some of these analysts again that have said that this particular company, Seplat, now has an upside of uh, over 800 naira. I know that a few years uh, earlier in the year, uh, some analysts did valuation and, 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 and did, did post that uh, the company has over 950 naira uh, upside. Uh, so, but that never happened. So perhaps with the uh, acquisition of Elan, which will happen uh, any moment from now, we should see that company, you know, taking uh, that particular price uh, eventually. With this notice, uh, we do hope that we'll continue to hear and, uh, and read from uh, Seplat, you know, regarding uh, updates as to the acquisition of this particular company, because that meeting we understand held about this time yesterday in London, and 75% uh, of the shareholders actually voted in favor of the uh, deal with uh, Seplat. Uh, Atempo, uh, to, to wrap up this uh, conversation, I'm sure, uh, how, do we get, how do you get around Lagos these days, closing at the stock exchange, going home, and coming back to the exchange every morning? It looks like the state of the roads and the repairs that we're seeing is making life very naughty and very hard. I'm still trying to peel my eyes, as they say in local parlance, peel your eyes, open it. I uh, just got heavy bags here because I spent hours and hours in the morning and later in the day navigating some of the worst states, state of the roads in Nigeria's history. Uh, I'm just a few years or above 50, so I'm close to Nigeria in terms of age group. So, uh, but then this is one of the worst states ever where I've ever seen. I agree. I agree. I agree with you, both. And sometimes we do the corporate bikes. I mean, the bikes is the way to go now. We just pray for some safety, actually. That's what I do. <laughs> Temple, how, do I, how do I take a bike through that kind of footage you're looking at right now with the mud taking almost half of the, whether it's OP or whatever, go Kada, whatever it is, uh, all across the city, yeah. Lagos is... Uh, initially, Temple, remember last year, if you remember last year, most of the conversations last year was about the Apapa gridlock. I'm sure you remember. And, and we thought we were having some fun. Yeah. It was all about getting yeah, to the seaport and out. The effect, now, it. the entire Apapa, nobody's talking about gridlock, we're talking about <laughs> yeah. Ikeja, Ikorodu, everywhere. As Apa, we've forgotten that Papa already. We're talking about uh, the highway in front of our office here, and it's becoming yeah. a nightmare day mm -hmm. and night. It's now the Lagos metropolis. It's now moved. So I'm surprised, Tempo. Last well, night. Perhaps this speaks to the. <laughs> Go on. Go ahead, please. <laughs> perhaps this speaks to what the uh, governor has actually stated that um, he's gotten the approval of the state's uh, assembly to actually raise some 250 billion naira, 100 billion naira of which will come from the capital market. But that will be next year. So maybe we just have to exercise some patience uh, till uh, January next year. And hopefully the uh, budget cycle will kick off from January, as the uh, uh, federal legislators have actually hinted or planned. You know, if that happens and falls in place, then we should see the state government, you know, uh, hitting the capital market, raising this bond, and possibly listing gates for uh, ease of exit and price discovery, you know, on the securities. And eventually, they can then spend this money on the road uh, because uh, uh, it looks Temple, like the, the government is passionate about getting good roads in place. Temple, but, uh, perhaps the I don't know. 
But, 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 but then the rains are back. Then we have this nasty traffic all around us. Uh, I'm not sure how it is. Uh, you can live next to your office, but how much would you live next to your church or mosque? Would you live next to your supermarket? I have your kids' school next to you. You have your generator next to you. You live next to your Nepal office. Indeed. Where else do you want to live close to? My producer just said we got to go. Time is up. Thank you so much, Temple. Thank you all our viewers here in Nigeria and around the world. <laughs> Let's have a great day, and we're back tomorrow Friday with Business Morning.